been touched by this disease have hopefully not, but maybe even lost loved ones. I know that I lost my grandmother a few years back to cancer, and it's one of those things where I never want anyone else to have to go through that experience. Your donations are what are making a difference. Every single dollar helps. So thank you. Thank you so much for keeping those coming. All right, and with that, I have heard that we're ready to go for our next run. So I hope you brought your winter coat and your summer jacket and your spring hoodie and something for fall because it's time for an All Essences Game Boy Color run of The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons by TGH. Good luck. Hey, thank you very much, Char. Appreciate it. Um, hi, I'm TGH. Um, and you may have saw, you may have seen me uh, brutally roast Keezer on earlier in uh, in the interview that we did. Uh, can check that one off the bucket list. But uh, I'm here with my wonderful commentators. If you'd like to introduce yourselves as well. Well, I am Astra's Evolution. Uh, I am here to commentate today. I play video games fast. Yeah. And my name is Ice Blue, and I'm just here to hang out and convince Teej that he's playing Undertale instead of uh, Oracle Seasons. Nah, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> At least not. Well, I don't know. Not today. Uh, um, not yet. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to get, go get going. This is uh, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Uh, released in 2001 for the Game Boy Color alongside its sister game, uh, Oracle of Ages. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. All right, so what is going on in this game? Um, so we have this intro seasons. sequence. Yes. Seasons are going. Seasons, seasons are indeed. happening. Well, not yet. Seasons aren't happening yet. The seasons don't exist currently. They will, though. They, they will. will. Impending seasons. Um, all right. So we need to talk to everyone on the screen in order to uh, let the intro, well, be over and advance to the next part of the game. <laughs> Which is where the main plot will reveal itself. Uh, so this is Din. Din's the Oracle of Seasons. Um, and a giant evil traffic cone known as General Onox is going to capture uh, the Oracle of Seasons and throw the seasons completely out of whack. It's our job to go and uh, collect all eight essences of nature. Uh, and yes, that is the, the category name, all essences, as opposed to any percent where you would duplicate a rooster over and over and over, or a res respawn rooster over and over, uh, to despawn the barrier in front of Onox's castle instead of doing what you need to do. But we're not going to do that. I actually don't even know how to do that. So at least not yet. I've never run any percent. Um, but this category, however, used to be any percent. Uh, as Kizaron actually in the interview before mentioned, this category used to be any percent. However, um, the categories were separated once that was found, once the uh, the rooster trick was found. That's called rooster adventure. Yeah. By the way. And now, I mean, didn't you know traffic cones are weak to to roosters? <laughs> All right. And then um, Onox is going to cast Snow Grave. Uh, no, no. Onox, Onox is preparing himself to play Ocarina of Time Rando oh, here. Oh, true. Scrapping yep. this giant, large bloopy here. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, and then he's also going to cause the worst thing of all time, and that is to sink uh, the, the Temple of Seasons into another world and create chaos in the environment. Pretty much. Pretty much nailed it. Yeah, so the Temple of Seasons is now sunken into Sabrosia. Uh, meanwhile, Link waking up. Probably five minutes after the events that just took place. Uh, and we're going to go get a sword now. So this is Horan Village. This is like the main uh, home, quote-unquote, village of the game. Link's yeah. home. I actually don't even know where Link's home is supposed to be. Uh, I don't uh, think in this setting he doesn't. He, he doesn't. He live doesn't in live Holodrome. in Holodrome. No, he doesn't. Yeah, I think he just he just exists. He just lives. <laughs> yeah, according like I mean, at least in the intro, it just shows that he's traveling on the horse you never see. Yeah, what, what horse? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so this is Hero's Cave. Uh, Hero's Cave is um 
it, so it becomes more uh, it becomes more relevant later on, besides for just getting the sword here. Uh, but we aren't actually going to touch it, aside from just getting the sword. It's not actually necessary yeah. to complete the game. And so, game's just basically teaching you some basics of like, hey, you can get keys from chests, you can hit switches, you can push blocks, it opens doors and stuff like that. Also, the most important thing that keys are terrible. Yeah, keys are awesome. Yeah, I was just about to say it also you teaches well. you. It also teaches that keys are literally the worst. Yeah. Yeah. For Same more, with for more reasons. For more reasons besides the fact that they just move around randomly as well, yeah. it has to do with RNG. We'll touch on that a little later. Yeah. And then, uh, well, first we gotta go see uh, the Great Deku Tree or. Well, what's it? What's this tree's name? In this the Maku, one? The Maku, Maku tree. tree. The Maku tree. Yeah. So uh, the Maku tree is going to give us the key to Dungeon One, which uh, you might actually recognize the general setting of Dungeon One from another don't you, Zelda. Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Uh, Look, it's, it's, we we can't talk about Oracle of Seasons without talking about Zelda One. It's not possible. Never, never heard of it. So it's this game Cause... that's on the Nintendo Entertainment System that pioneered the adventure genre. Oh, you mean Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link? All right. Then. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, this game is uh, this game was transformed uh, early on in development from a uh, an actual remake of Zelda 1 to uh, it just just kind of an homage to Zelda 1 in a lot of different aspects, including uh, some of its overworld design, including this right here where you cross a bridge to a an island with a tree and you enter the tree yeah and the layout is very similar to zelda one you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, sections that are in 2d that are very reminiscent to the um item locations in zelda one as well oh oh my favorite enemies in the game right here right right Asher? yeah good old sans yeah yeah the the sans undertale characters here get it all out now Get it all out now. <laughs> oh, hey, there he is again. You just, you just can't <laughs> get it off Multiple of them. of them. Multiple of them. You cannot escape, Teach. It's impossible. So one so thing... something important... Oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, I was going to say something important that I do want to mention is that I am actually killing uh, seemingly random enemies when I don't need to. Uh, that is actually to make a manipulation work outside of Dungeon 1. Uh, so I guess I'll explain how... That manipulation in particular works, and then I'll explain manipulation in general, or RNG in general, I should say. So uh, we need to kill at least 30 enemies to make Maple spawn at the end of this dungeon. Maple is the witch that flies around and knocks items uh, off of Link's person and also drops items herself. We're going to actually RNG manipulate for Maple to drop a couple of things as we get bombs there. Yeah, just uh, a random chest of bombs. Necessary to progress Conveniently. later. Conveniently. Yeah. Conveniently. Yep. Yeah, right by a wall that you need to blow up as well. Oops. It's so convenient. Sure it's so great. And then we're going to be yeah, fighting so uh, the best best bosses in the game. Yeah, we're going to be fighting a couple of, uh, of Pokemon menu sprites from Gen 1. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, Charmeleon and War Turtle coming up here. Yeah. Oops, that's the wrong way. So great. There we go. Oh, that fairy tried to run. Yeah. yeah. Or, or fly, sorry. Oh, that was not what I wanted. That's fine still. Yeah, their HP is right connected, the so you don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, well, they each, I think they each have their... Wait, I might be blanking now. <laughs> You're probably right. I could have sworn they had individual HPs, but if one dies, they both die. Yeah. But I yeah, think, I think, think... Their, their health is linked. Yeah. Like Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Wow. Wow, my goodness. So right. amazing. So, we have a seed satchel now. Seed satchel can carry five different types of seeds. Um, ember seeds, scent seeds, gale seeds, pegs of seeds, and mystery seeds. Whoops. I can't miss another one of those ember seeds. Um, because of the manipulation that I do, I need to have at least 15 ember seeds, and we use two later, so... Yeah. All right, so now is a good a good time to explain how RNG works in general. But first, I'm going to go ahead and listen for a sword pattern here. Okay, we got it. 
All right, so what I just did there was I influenced the RNG value. There's one RNG value in this game, really, that controls pretty much every bit of randomness in this game, from enemy movement to drops, etc. Um, by swinging my sword, I actually roll the RNG forward because things that call upon the RNG typically roll it forward as well, so as to prevent staleness. And uh, as we fight Aquamentus here, I actually swing my sword three times at the beginning of the room. Hit him nine times. Yeah, and this manipulation is going to be especially important for after the dungeon, where when we uh, encounter Maple, we want to get very specific drops from bumping into her. Uh, both of those drops are going to be a, um, a magic potion, which is just kind of a fun little neat thing we get on the side, and then a ring that when we appraise it will be the level 2 power ring. And we're also going to carry this manipulation all the way into one of the very special room in Dungeon 2. Yeah. So I think I'm actually behind on RNG, so I need to listen for a pattern. Um, okay, we're good. Just need to listen for two highs nice. there. And one slash after Maple hits you, and this is perfect. Yeah. Okay, so now we have an L2 power ring, uh, which increases both my sword's power and the damage that I take uh, by one unit, uh, essentially doubling both of those things, um, or essentially doubling my sword's power at least, and a magic potion which revives me when I die, um, which kind of offsets the risk reward of the L2 power ring. Um, yeah. With that being said, we're going to go through a bunch of like walking sections here uh, with uh, our favorite Subrosion, Rosa. So uh, until then, or until we uh, do some more interesting things, uh, now's a good time for donations. Perfect. We have a very special donation. We have five thousand dollars from reaper hulk wow. reaper hulk says my wife lost her dad to cancer so i'm always happy to donate to such a worthy cause thanks to gdq for supporting such wonderful charities and teach thank you for having such a welcoming community and running so many great 2d zeldas good luck with the all essences run thank you reaper hulk that was super generous for real reaper thank you yeah, so much that's incredible we also have $5 from Hexy Lexi, who says, Hey, Tiege, reminder that you are loved aggressively. And that's in all caps, so it was very aggressively. Thanks, Lexi. Good luck on your, <laughs> good luck on your run. <laughs> also, chat, don't forget to be kind to one another. Donation goes to runner's choice. Do we have time for a few more? Uh, sure, go ahead. Awesome. We have $100 from Ori Sky, who says, Been looking forward to this run all week. Can't wait to hear all the jams in this game. Here's the facade being even easier than LADX. Link playing a banger on the tree stump, and Onox attacking with that giant blue rupee. Also, hey, Teach, which Zelda game has a lot of dried fruit in it? Oracle of Reasons? Raisins? Oracle of Raisins. Oracle Let's go of with that. <laughs> Good luck with the rest of the run, putting my donation towards runner's choice. P.S. For each attempt at hide and seek skip, I'll donate another $25. Please be kind to my wallet. <laughs> I actually intend to do something like that as well, so hopefully I'm kind to my own as well, but I expect yeah. nothing less uh, than the, the bad puns from, from Ori, so thank you. Thanks very much. All right, so we are getting the Rod of Seasons, which is the, uh, the main... Um, I'd use the word gimmick, but gimmick feels a little cheap to use here. It's the main mechanic of the game, yeah. essentially. Uh, you can change the seasons with this. Um, periodically, periodically, we'll be coming back to the Temple of Seasons to gain access to more seasons. But for right now, we're just going to have access to winter yeah. uh, by going down here and hitting this switch, which we are supposed to hit with the boomerang, I think. But instead, we're yeah. just going to be able to bomb. Yeah, who needs subrosion dancing anyway? Yeah, pretty much. We can just yeah, we'll 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 save that for another video game. Yeah, yeah. Ages, uh, ages. <laughs> it's the it's the moron guinea games. <laughs> <laughs> Shout outs to my inability to speak English. Okay, so uh, I'm actually still on RNG manipulation. By the way, um, you might have seen me during the Rosa uh, stealth section, quote unquote. Um, you might have seen me swing my sword a couple times. Uh, that was to actually uh, give me the fastest uh, possible pattern on Rosa, because she can do a couple of different things. 
Uh, but swinging my sword there actually influenced the RNG uh, in a certain way to make that quicker. But we're still on manipulation. Uh, we want to have favorable enemy movement uh, before and inside Dungeon 2, which is why yeah. we're still on it. So when I come out of Sabrosia here, I'm actually going to listen for a high slash. And then we're going to progress. Oh, wow, it happened right away. That wow. was weird. That's, that's strange, considering I thought I... Uh, so, all right, let me explain. Uh, RNG rolls every frame on the title screen, and I thought I mashed through it well enough there to uh, make that a non-issue, but apparently I didn't. So instead, we have a slight issue, but it shouldn't be anything that I can't correct later. Yeah. Uh, Y'all are going to move, right? No? Okay, good. Whatever. <laughs> They did not move. So I do have to uh, survey the enemy movements here instead of just knowing yeah. what they're gonna do. I also uh, want to jump in here, and this uh, girl's gonna think that we're Santa Claus, uh, and then she's gonna give you a shovel, and she's like, "All right, uh, dig up my lawn, please." Yep, pretty much. I think it's uh, she thinks you're Santa, and then she realizes you're not Santa, and she's like, "Go, go, shovel." I think that's what happens. There's something like that. Yeah. Either way, we got a free shovel out of the deal, so I think that's yeah, okay, it's worth can't it. Complain there. Yeah, and then we're gonna be grabbing uh, these mystery seeds hmm. for when we need them later. Yep. And I need to listen for another sword pattern uh, in front of D two. Okay, that actually worked out fine. Nice. All right, so you'll you'll realize. Uh, so this is Snake's Remains, uh, the dungeon two of the game. Uh, we're gonna go up here and get this key really quick, and then after that, we're gonna soft reset. Speaking of soft resetting, by the way, you'll notice that I will actually uh, I'll actually save and continue. One second. I think that was it. Actually, um, we save and continue, and then press all the buttons. Uh, I, I think my input display is getting captured uh, near my webcam. But you'll notice that I press all the buttons to soft reset the game. This is the room right here that we minute for, essentially. Yeah. Like, this is the most important part of it, because you can probably see why. Yeah, Those two moblins right there are a pain to deal with when they're completely randomly yeah. moving. Also, hey, the game didn't crash in that room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my Seasons card has been um, ailing. A bit. It's not ailing, but like it's been crashing. But ever since I cleaned it, it's been fine. So yeah. we shouldn't see any crashes this run. Yeah, and then this is kind of where the manip ends, right? Like we got the important part done, so yep, we can just kind of yeah, move is on. Yeah, and plus we wouldn't be able to extend it because uh, coming up we're going to be encountering keys, and as mentioned before. Uh, keys suck not only because they move around a bunch, but because they move around a bunch, they roll RNG. Was it every two frames or something? Yep, once every yeah, two frames every, exactly. Yeah, once every two frames. So it's right, so this Moblin is my friend here. So it's basically impossible See, to manip friend. with a uh, keys around. Yeah, keys are the enemy of uh, of RNG in yeah. this game. These keys, however, in this room for whatever reason, are different. As well yeah. as some keys in Hero's Cave, uh, the keys in the previous room there specifically uh, only move in like a circular pattern. Yeah, it's really weird. And they don't roll RNG as much, but then you immediately have RNG rolling in the very next room. So, yeah, like, where they're like erratically a... moving and stuff, and it's it's just not fun. <laughs> okay, so the rest of the uh, well, the name of the game for the rest of Dungeon Two is just keeping my health. Yeah, because we want to maintain the potion for as long as possible because the longer you keep it, the more effective the potion becomes when you're at higher health. And so if you say lose it when you have four hearts, that's it's not really that productive of a usage for the potion. So we just want to make sure that oh, we so maintain this is, it. This is, this is the hardest mini boss in the game right here. What mini boss? Yeah, I, need, I, need, I need to focus. I just see him throwing his bombs at the floor. I don't know what you're no, talking no. about. Shh, 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 shh. No, no, there's a boss here. Yo, we oh, got it. All right, well, awesome. Yo, you defeat it. You defeat it, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh, geez. 
I, it was so it, it was such a difficult boss. <laughs> it was moving so fast I couldn't see it. Face from Nick Jr. will no longer live to torture innocent civilians anymore. Oh, thank At you. This, um, th but thank yeah, you. that was that was facade. Uh, that's a mini boss. He won't actually do anything unless you go below him. Uh, and I just never went below him. So, fun fact about that boss: in uh, in actually, uh, Ori's donation earlier alluded to this, but uh, facade is also a main boss in Link's Awakening and Link's Awakening DX. And they somehow managed to make him even easier, but he's like kind of similarly strange in LADX. Uh, you can basically like he'll spawn after a certain amount of time, but you can hit him before he spawns as well in that game. So like they kind of didn't fix him, but yeah. that's only possible, however, in the Japanese version. Yeah, it's not possible in any other version. So uh, welcome to we the have... best uh, design boss here. So first we have the Dodongo. <laughs> where you can just throw the bombs into oh, his wow. mouth and then pick him up and then throw him onto the spikes. Uh, whoever gonna, was the main boss who decided, hey, let's make this room for this dungeon, uh, really didn't think things through. I mean, the architect who decided this, this was a, a good idea and the person who paid the architect for this room both needs to... <laughs> you know, be questioned about this. Reconsider, yeah. at the very least. Plants with explosives, yeah. spikes. <laughs> we're gonna put a boss in a room where they eat bombs and we're gonna put bomb spawning bushes and the boss's weakness is being poked in the stomach with spikes. Yeah, somebody misunderstood their assignment there. <laughs> <laughs> so as we get the gift of time, uh, we have time for some more donations. <laughs> Uh, if you'd like to. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm clever sometimes. <laughs> we have one from someone special. $15 from Amber Cyprin, who says, Hey all, Amber Cyprin here with my first donation of the event to cheer on my wonderful partner, TGH. It's been three years together and you continue to be the light of my life. Thank you so much for supporting me through the years. And would you mind using the Rod of Seasons to make it spring so it's not so cold outside? <laughs> Thank you, Amber. We'll be able to do that and soon. We... And love you. Love you, honey. Thank you so much. Do yeah. you have time for one more? Um, we do, yeah. As I get my ring appraised here, uh, yeah, that's fine. You are okay? I'll do a, I'll do a fast one. <laughs> we have $25 from Proxy Glitch Cat, who says, So excited to see the Oracle of Seasons run. Best of luck to the runner. Please stay warm. I mean, cool. I mean, warm. I mean, wait, hold on. <laughs> Thank you for that donation. See, English is a funny, like, language because cool, hot, and, like, one other temperature-related word chill doesn't mean either of those things can mean something good. They can mean, like, cool. It's, it's weird. Yeah. I, 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 I like that donation. <laughs> it's like okay. saying you're both up and down to do something. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I'm up for that. I'm down for that. Anyway... It's English so, uh, chat, chat, are y'all ready to box a penguin? Because we are. I am. Yeah, I'm ready. We're ready to box a penguin. All right. So we already know that we need to get Ricky's gloves. Um, the good thing about this game is that uh, it's not like, say, the Minish Cap, where you need to activate flags first before you do certain things. Um, so as a result, we can just wait for Blano to cooperate. There we go. There we go. Um, we can just get these gloves without having talked to Ricky, uh, which is cool. We're going to go talk to Ricky now, and Ricky's going to say, hey, can you go get my gloves? Oh, wait, you got my gloves. Cool. Can I have my gloves? Thanks. Uh, and then we'll be off with Ricky. Ricky the kangaroo, that is. The boxing kangaroo. Yeah. There's a fun little thing about uh, Ricky that we'll learn soon. Oh, yes. boy. Other than the so, fact uh, that his movement is really awkward. Yeah. Do you do yeah. you like your RNG to be rolled by a lot? <laughs> every jump. Uh, depends we on do. the time of day. So every single time Ricky hops, every hop rolls RNG forward one. Uh, and you can determine which RNG value, I think, with uh, whenever Ricky makes a noise, right? Yeah, because it's used to roll when Ricky makes a noise. And so uh, we're going to have a manipulation coming up. 
and uh, you're gonna see that you're gonna hear that sound a lot. <laughs> That's gonna and you're fun. gonna you're gonna grow to to love that sound. What like the Yoshi sound sort of deal? <laughs> yeah. We yeah, could, but this could. time we don't we don't get to yeet Ricky into a pit. Dang. Unfortunately. <laughs> Wait, when would you be able to do that? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're setting up a manipulation here, and what this manipulation is gonna do, it's gonna set up a first try star ore dig for the bow key item for Rosa and it's also going to set up three seed, uh, three Pegasus seed drops in Dungeon 3 um, and Hopefully. it's just going to make our lives very easy yeah and speaking of Pegasus seeds this is basically our little speed item in this game so instead of getting boots we actually have little seeds that we can just activate and then we can just run really fast the whole time and so that's yep, so, really helpful. Yeah, it's like the Pegasus boots in, say, Link's Awakening or uh, or Link to the Past, more famously probably. Um, but just imagine you can move with free reign in all eight directions, and also it's a consumable. Yeah. So we're gonna be getting needing those drops as much as we can because we can only uh, travel to that tree that gives the Pegasus seeds every so often. And so we have to basically use them effectively and we need to know when to get more. Because we'll run out also, fast. I, also, I, I, question. So does Link eat these seeds? Or does Who he knows? like squeeze them? Like, I, I, things you gotta ask well, here it's like you, is he eating them to go fast for eight seconds you didn't need to ask that now now i'm thinking about it <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, a, an indicator that we're on the right rng seed here uh that last screen with the um the little pincers that come out of the ground uh we're looking for a ruby drop there before he hops over the pit and then we're looking for a bomb and a ruby drop on that screen yeah Yep, and the fact and that I got right. a hard drop there is also really good. Yeah. Uh, I might have actually... Uh, okay, we're fine there. Yeah. I'm actually going to play this kind of safe because with full hearts, I can get more lag frames here, and this screen right here makes it more di uh, difficult. I need, I need to listen. Okay. Nice. That should be good. Yeah. So now our first dig here is going to be the Star War. Yep. Well, it's yeah. right here. Perfect. Yeah, and that usually spawns in one of four locations, but because we uh, manipul manipulated it, we can just dig it up on the first dig. So it's really nice. Which is very nice. It's funny because like, um, so that manip was was basically designed to get the first try Star War, uh, and then it ended up getting what's actually probably more beneficial later on. Like ended up the being three extended. Seeds, yeah. Yeah. Also, Oops. can we just call so, out the fact that? Someone took Rosa's bow and then decided to sell it in the market for the most valuable ore. It's pretty messed up. Yeah. Stonks. Stonks. So Brosians are very quirky uh, creatures. S selling um, they're very other people's endearing. stuff back to them. <laughs> they're, they're very endearing uh, casually, like, you know, if you can read what they're saying. Uh, but It's okay, though. We but. brought we brought Rosa's bow back, and we get to take her on a date, and just basically just use her key. Yeah, and then much. we bring her, and then we we leave, and we Link's just leave. kind of a dog. <laughs> Link's a bit of a dog. Ah, come what on, a, Link. What, and he what a gentleman. And he's doing all of this to save Zelda, but he's saving Dan. Sheesh, sheesh. This is we got some complex layers here worst hero of time is this the hero of time no it's not uh it's the hero of legend i think this is Same after link from link to link to past. Past. yeah yeah i think that's the hero of legend okay. Some, yeah. so um my main enemy for this manipulation after like you know besides for ricky <laughs> is uh the title screen. The so Ricky's number one, the title screen is number two, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, the RNG rolls once every frame on the title screen. 
Uh, so I need to mash through that as fast as possible so that I have some leeway. Whoops. Okay, so oh, I didn't want to jump one more time with Ricky. That's fine. And Ricky rolls RNG, so we're just going to ditch him as soon as possible. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to need to listen in just a second. I recognize this RNG. We're all, I already know we're fine. Cool, cool. Should take like 10, somewhere between 10 and 12 slashes before D3. But I'm listening for three highs, and then immediately after three highs, the three mids. Excuse me, two highs. Not three highs. And this is Poison Moth Lair. Yeah. Bloop, bloop. You're welcome. <laughs> Alright, so the mint begins now. There's one. Whoops. There's two. And that's two. So if I go all the way down on that screen, uh, I can actually get another seed drop here from the last pot if I do yeah. this room correctly. This room actually takes some pretty heavy AI manipulation, some careful movement. Yeah. Because they'll always try to spawn out in front of yeah. you. There's the last seed. Yeah, very nice last seed there. So now whatever happens Ooh. next, just got to get the pot over <laughs> onto the switch. That was way too close. Whew. Yeah. That but was way too close. It. But we're good. Yeah, and that's going to be really helpful because as you can see, our seed count just shot up because of that. So that's going to be really helpful. Yeah, like you might be you might be saying like, oh, three seed drops, that's nothing. Each drop is five seeds. Yeah. Keep that in mind. And uh, if, you use, if you use a seed to its full potential, uh, it can save you up to four seconds. Now, granted, they don't usually save you four seconds because, you know, that's if you maximize it. But if you uh, if you don't swing your sword at all or stop and also move perfectly, you save four seconds. <laughs> Yeah, and that okay. adds up a ton over the course of the run. Slash twice here to manipulate these uh, uh, anti-fairies in that room. Yeah. All right, now let's see if I can finish this off. Perfect. Perfect. Very nice. That was very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, the entire actually... time we had the uh, level 2 power ring equipped, and that was to basically make it so we could get the kills a lot easier. Uh, and then we're just going to unequip it because we want to make sure that health is not an issue. Yeah, and that is about as good as that minip can possibly go, so yeah. I'm actually really happy with that. Yeah, that's a, that was really nice. This is this is a very famous room for being really bad. Yeah, because the <laughs> right keys there. can just rent because... Uh, Enemies spawn in random places on a screen, and how they move, especially with keys, is also random. And so if you're not on manipulation, uh, those keys can just spawn like in the center or something, and then just ram straight into you in midair, and then you fall all the way down. Yeah, like that. that's a point too, where like you're never on manipulation anymore. Like you typically have ended up by that point, if you do the minip in the first place. Oh, yeah. wow, the one keys in the room almost screwed me over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, see, it can it can still happen. Yeah. The one keys, one keys is sometimes all it takes. Okay, so we're going to do this room again. Again, these, uh, these uh, floor masters here uh, are going to try to spawn in front of me. They'll spawn, yeah. like, above me and to the left if I'm not moving, which I'm going to take advantage of, as, advantage of as well here. Oh, that's too early. Oh, okay, I'm at sucks. Also, oh, well. dang, look at all these hands. Someone, an Undertale runner would love these. Damn, room's got hands. Oh, true. I'm sorry. Speaking of Undertale, we have our no. sub-boss of the dungeon coming up here. Uh, no, we don't. This is uh, Undying, yep. the Undying. No, it's not. <laughs> Three of her. I grab that health in case. Three, three undines here. Yeah, look at that. My favorite Zelda enemy, undine. Look at that. We got one. There's two. Right. Good fight. And three. Decent Perfect. fight. That fight can get out of hand, particularly yeah. if you uh, clink the the uh, squids that haven't quite come out of the ground yet. That mini boss is the real squid game right there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right, and then we're gonna get our uh, boss key here, and then go all the way back through the dungeon, except not because we have a warp portal, and then we're going to go fight the boss, Mopula. This is a really good time to point out to the, uh, the the resource management that is uh, involved in this run. Like for instance, I'm using my last seed right at the very end of D, uh, D3, just like it should be. Yeah, and like, that was with the manipulation. Like imagine yeah. there was no manipulation. It's Mothula, Link to the Past Runners Rejoice. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you'll notice- Thankfully there's, there's no spikes though. You'll notice that periodically um, I equip and unequip the ring. You are free to do that at your leisure, which is really nice considering, uh, you know, if I if I go through a long stretch of uh, of of gameplay or travel or whatever without needing to attack anything, uh, I don't want to take extra damage uh, from wearing the ring. So I'll just unequip it. Yeah. Uh, that being said, we actually have some time for donations since we just finished uh, Dungeon 3 if they're well, I'm sure there are some donations. <laughs> oh, there are a very large number of you know, donations. You do many, not have to I'm... worry about that. <laughs> I do really quickly want to call out as well, since I took over the hosting mic, we already raised like $4,000 for that Banana Mania bonus game incentive. Oh so chat, you are killing it. Please keep that energy up. Uh, donation wise, we have $25 Oh, from Kizaron. That's a name I recognize. Oh uh, Kizaron, <laughs> sa Kizaron says, I've never rooted so hard for a runner to fail than right now. Shut up, Kiz. <laughs> <laughs> he, then, he then continues, just kidding. Tease, you're always a treat to watch, and I expect a good clip for the daily recap tonight. Also, nice Pokemon behind you, nerd. <laughs> oh, what, Thank you, what, this, uh, this This whooper here? This glorious, <laughs> this glorious whooper? This? Yes. <laughs> This. <laughs> we also have $50 from Sadiv Khan, who says, Hey everyone, I've been watching GDQ since the beginning, and I always look forward to them. All of you are doing a wonderful job and are truly improving the world. Teach is a great streamer. He can perform such complex maneuvers while also explaining exactly what he's doing. Enjoy this run of my second favorite Zelda Oracle game. Donation goes to Teach's Choice. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you enjoy. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes I stumble into properly explaining something. But, yeah. Glad y'all have fun. Thanks very <laughs> much. Keep the donations coming. Oh, oh good, because we have plenty yeah, of sure. them. We're, we're just, uh, <laughs> I think we have time for one more. We're good. Yeah. One more, okay. Murby donates $100 and says, so I've been saving this donation for months because last year I happened to get some money from my grandpa who happened to die of cancer 20 years ago, but made a smart investment before he died. This is in memory of him because it felt right to use some of that surprise inheritance to help prevent cancer. That said, Tiege, what do we have to do for you to finally do a casual linked playthrough and thus hear one of the best songs in the Oracle games? Uh, Thank you, Murby, for thinking of us with your grandfather's <laughs> inheritance. That is such a sweet gift. Yeah, thank you so much, Murby. Appreciate it. Can we, uh, can we give a big shout out to the best, the best animal here? Yes, yes we can. Dimitri. Dimitri. Also, our, we're about to do something uh, a little weird. So we're going to get like a, a special membership card and then we're going to give it to this inventor craftsman something like that and he's gonna give us flippers so that we can swim in water flippers that he would need to use to swim yeah so we strand him in this cave yeah he'll be fine With no it's food okay, though, actually he's got he... a couple of bushes yeah if <laughs> to, what to float on <laughs> if, if you actually look closely at his sprite he's still wearing flippers He's still wearing flippers after uh, after he gives you uh, that pair. And why is so he in there? I think he's fine. I don't know. <laughs> Probably can't swim even with them. Oh, true. How did yeah. he get there then? Uh, the, the bushes. Oh, true. There we go. That's that's our answer. The lore has been discovered. Perfect. Yes. We have done it. And so with that, we can just enter this uh, this little portal here. Yep, and we're gonna we're gonna go get the bomb flower on the southern part of Sabrosia here. Somehow didn't explode. I heard um, 
I heard, I heard putting a crown on a bomb makes makes the bomb like 20 times stronger. It's, it's common knowledge. I, it's I thought y'all would science. know. Just science, yeah. Don't try that. Right, so now that we have that. Now that we have that, we're going to go blow open the uh, the wall to access uh, the second season. No, the third season. Third, this third, is the third, third season. I was going to say third, Thank third you. season. <laughs> this is the third season. Season three of Oracle so not of only seasons. can Teej, not only can Teej barely speak, can't count. Can't either. even count. Can't even count. Well, it's actually, fall. yeah, we can't even. It's fall. We can't even count because we're going to what Dungeon Five next, right? Uh, that is correct. Yes. Yeah. One, uh, two, do, three, five. Uh, do one of you yeah. want to explain why we're doing Dungeon Five next instead of Dungeon Four? Sure. So the reason that we do Dungeon Five first is we have to go pick up an item in order to perform a certain skip to do Dungeon 4 basically faster. Um, that skip is going to be called Hide and Seek Skip. Uh, we'll touch up a little bit more on that in a bit, uh, but the reason we go there is we need to go pick up the item from Dungeon 5, uh, which is the Magnet Gloves. And we, we use those Magnet Gloves, which, by the way, have the best sound in the game. Um, it's literally a cat jam. Um... Not the dungeon, well, I mean, the dungeon itself is literally a cat jam, but the, the gloves, whoo, music to my ears. Yeah, it's such quiet. a good sound that I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure Skrillex sampled it at one point. Yeah, when, when he was making um, the, the buoy bass theme uh, for Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to, we're going to go pick up, we're going to go pick up those, uh, those sweet, sweet gloves. Um, and we're going to do a double frame perfect skip, basically. Yep. Um, that's after that D5. Is, yeah. Yeah, that's after D5. Uh, that'll basically allow us to go get the final season so we can access Dungeon 4. Um, if we do it in the, the you know, the intended order, uh, we'd have to do the hide and seek minigame, which basically is where you go into Sabrosia and you get ambushed by two Sabrosias and they steal your feather and then you have to go on a long long journey of like four screens to get your feather back yeah yeah it's a bit uh it's a bit not palatable for a speed run well it's, it's actually like you know it's it's to the point where I think it saves a minute the route overall saves a minute so you can choose to not do it um, but you're just losing a minute by not doing it. Yeah. Uh, I think there's also like, isn't there like other other methods of hide and seek skip um, involving like a like a bomb boost across like lava? I think you're thinking of um, of an additional strat that people can do but don't typically do. Yeah. I don't know how that Zolda hit me, by the way. That was actually yeah. impressive. Also, this dungeon's great because you have a bunch of enemies who spawn in random places and go around and annoy you. You're going to be seeing a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, that, I was I mean, this say, dungeon, that sounds like every dungeon. Yeah. This dungeon is also great because of the soundtrack. True. Oh, yeah, this, this place has good music. This is Unicorn's Cave, by the way. But we'll get the um, best oh, edition here. soon. Here we go. Oh, there oh. it is. Oh, right, beautiful now, music to my ears. Now there we get just, the just listen. Just listen closely to how fantastic these things sound. There we go. It's it's my favorite beautiful. letter. <laughs> beautiful e? music to my <laughs> yeah. E. E. So fun thing about uh, the magnet I... gloves, uh, you can actually use it to transfer oh, port you over. Uh, pits and stuff and so what you can do is if you're magnetized to something you can also jump out of it and you'll have a period of time where you can jump out of it and that can be really cool for strats you can do which is really nice yeah i think we we do that once we do that once in dungeon seven nice seed drop by the way yeah nice. that's nice that's actually. really nice seed for the rest of the room seed drop in that room is really nice uh, it lets me be more aggressive with seeds for the rest of the dungeon, uh, which I don't need too many more seeds than I already have for the rest of the dungeon, but it's nice to have the extra. Yeah. And also it saves um, me a little bit of time later too. Another another cool feature with uh, the magnet gloves coming up 
in a few rooms here. Um, if you're magnetized to like one of like those little spinning platform things that you can magnetize to, you can actually walk on a pit for about a second and jump immediately out of it. It's it's really crazy. You'll see that you'll see in just a bit. Teach will actually just walk on a pit. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah. So, um, so the tech that Astra mentioned earlier, actually, um, so that pertains to if you aren't on one of these spinny things, but look at how many frames, like, look at how long I can stand, basically, and walk on the air uh, from those things. Like, that's He's basically really hovering. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'll stop those, please. It's really nice uh, that we can do that because... It means that we don't have to worry about having to wait the full time of pushing back, then oh, yeah. changing a, holes again. There's a jump off of thin air yeah. as well, because I, I menu buffered for it. Um, but the time I do it later, I'm going to try it unbuffered. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, and this dungeon has a lot of minecarts. Nice and fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the Minish Cap. Right, here we have the oh, uh, my yeah. my favorite Zelda boss, the tiger, the saber the tiger. tiger, my favorite. It also is apparently a fidget spinner. <laughs> God, I, ne I never I never saw that before. Now you I, did. I never did. made that connection. Jeez. It's so great. Yes. Just an example, by the way, of like how, uh, oh yeah, we do, we don't care about those flames. We just kind of jump through them, uh, which is pretty cool. But like at the end of that room, though, um, I could use a seed there where I otherwise couldn't because I got that extra seed drop. Look at all these conveyor belts, spikes. What is this? Mega Man? Is it made by God, Capcom it's almost like or this, something? It's almost like this is a Capcom game. It you is. could like almost, you could almost hear the animation of Mega Man dying in that room. It's pretty good. Yeah, this, this game was actually made by Flagship, which is a subsidiary of Capcom. Uh, shout outs to some viewers in my chat yesterday for literally teaching me that yesterday. Um, for for whatever reason, I wasn't, I didn't even know that, like, the, nice. Um, I didn't even know that, like, Flagship was a thing until... Wow, Keys are please? great, by the way. Yeah, Keys are, are not fantastic. fun. All right, so Dig Dogger is uh, a boss. In this video yeah. game. So yeah, you remember you remember that sound effect that I told y'all about? I, I really hope y'all enjoyed listening to it. Yeah, Dig Dogger hates noise. Didn't you know that? Ooh. Oh come on! And also Are you spike serious? balls. Uh that's it's unfortunate. Literally one piece left. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, and I just missed it like twice as well. Like I missed it by pixels, if that. All right, so directly upcoming uh, is hide and seek skip. So let me try to explain this real quick. So it is a trick that involves us clipping into a rock just enough so that we can actually pick up uh, a rock that is normally used for like a sort of backtrack or backwards shortcut kind of thing um, from a hole, from a pit. So how do we do that? We use the magnet gloves, which we just got, uh, as well as a bomb boost. And the thing about the magnet gloves that you might have noticed, actually, um, from me jumping in Dungeon 5 just now, is that when you're airborne, when using the magnet gloves, it actually like accelerates you faster to your target, like to the thing that you're magnetizing to or from, uh, which is useful in this scenario. Uh, this trick is double frame perfect uh, at 60 FPS, at 60 frames per second. So. Uh, let's see. This might take me a few tries, but we're gonna aim for one try. Let's see if we can uh, take this on. Fingers crossed. My, my favorite kind of tricks: double frame perfect. Oh, actually, I need a. Uh, I need that to be south. Yeah. My bad. Hey. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was frame or two too far. All right, there we go. Now we're in business. I think that's too much. Yep. Okay, that was a frame late on the second one. All right. All right, try number two. Nope. 
Nope, that was, I think, a frame early, I think. Yeah. Oh. I keep, like, misidentifying the frame. Yeah. This trick is not easy. No, not even in the slightest. Oh, All right, I think there we got it is. Go. There we go. There we go. Okay, that is hide and seek skip. So that rock was supposed to be picked up from the other side. Um, as sort of like a, a get me back the other way, easier sort of deal. Uh, but we take advantage of the fact that we can do that. Yeah. But we didn't want to go the other way. <laughs> no, we didn't we want to. We don't want to go the other way. <laughs> I don't want to play the game as intended. Yeah, and then we uh, find a little uh, secret passageway to get uh, spring. Or is it summer? Uh, that, that is spring. spring. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For yeah, some reason, I always season. confuse spring and summer because they look very similar in this game. Yeah, they do. They're both generally green. Yeah. Whereas fall is generally red yeah. and winter is generally white. Yeah. So easy to get the two confused sometimes. All right, yeah. So as we make our way back to uh, Sunken Village uh, to get more Gale Seeds and then proceed to Northeast Holodrum, we do have time for some more donations, if um, if you may, Char Bunny. Oh, I may. <laughs> we have plenty of them. We have $1,000 from Siliana who says, hey, love this event and I can... 10,000% get behind this. Cancer took some of my family away and it's a scourge that needs to be eliminated. Completely agree with you. Thank you so much for donating. We also have $50 from JJam who says, hey TGH, does TGH stand for these glitches hurt? Or this Gerudo's hubris? No? <laughs> Regardless of what it stands for, good luck on the run and show those keys who's boss. You were close. And we have... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if this next one can get it. We have $25 from Prometheus who says, Hey Tej, Prometheus here. I've already said it this morning during your stream, but you are an awesome person, a great speedrunner who taught me a lot about the spirit of speedrunning and my overall favorite streamer. Starting a day with your stream is destined to be a good day. Thank you for you being you. Also, in case you didn't know chat, TGH stands for the greatest human. Lots of love, greetings from Germany, and let those pirates sail out of the flaming desert. Also, sorry I couldn't think of any puns. I guess they have to season some more. Thank you so much, Prometheus. That was a good You're one. right about the puns part. <laughs> That's a pretty um, good one. JJ and Prometheus, you, thank y'all so much. Teach, teach, teach. You forgot the bananas. I did? Yes. Uh, whoops. Okay. Save and quit. <laughs> sorry. You just, like, walked straight <laughs> off the cliff. Oh, wow. I missed them again. There we go. All right, we I got thought the he, I thought now. he jumped down. I thought he jumped down without him. Mm, so nobody, right, nobody coming saw up that. here, fine. coming up here, we have literally the worst animal in the game. That's mean. Is it though? Is it? Mm. I mean, even if it's true, it's mean. Come on now. <laughs> nah, Moosh is Moosh is fine. Uh, yeah, just fine. I, th I think I think Moosh is yeah, the just, least just interesting. Fine. Just fine, but. That doesn't make him bad. no just fine <laughs> just fine hey we get to we get some good use we get we get the key and then that's it bye moosh all right Woo! Woo! all right bye moosh see you later thanks yep. for nothing well we we see him again oh no we see moosh again also we see the, the see, rooster the thing that absolutely annihilates this game Oh, one thing I I, uh, I did not actually mention is that the way we got to the rooster was kind of interesting. Uh, we could clip into the uh, the rocks there. Uh, all you need to do is just clip one pixel into the rock, and you can actually just straight up uh, get eaten by a like like. Nice. You can actually straight up uh, just grab the rooster from the other side. Yeah. Which is nice. So Basically, he time. cheated. Basically, he cheated. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, right, so making our way towards entering dungeon four now. These moblins um, are a little too yeah, close. These for moblins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a, little, a little close there. Yeah. So this this jump, by the way, right here is going to look like I'm not going to make it, but we made it. That's fine. Uh, that's a two tile jump. But if you offset yourself, 
uh, like on a half tile, it actually makes it a lot easier to get across. Yeah, and then we just unlock the dungeon, and then we get to hear, well, in my opinion, one of the best songs in the game. One of the second best dungeon song in the game. I don't know why at first I thought you were referencing the white noise. Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's also the, that, that, no, that's up there. That's, that's up that's, there. That's, that's, that's like number we get three. To hear, we get to hear the most wonderful flat sound wave in the game. Yeah, white there's noise. that, and then there's the magnet gloves, and then there's this. Why turn on my CRT when I can just listen to D4 opening? Uh, that's fine. Okay, cool. Had right, my doubts right. about that bomb. All right, chat. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a little snooze here. Um, this is a very riveting and entertaining puzzle here. Uh, we're just gonna push these pots. This room is great. To these to these switches. It's some fun little gonna, movement. Just uh, visually just gonna, very very riveting. Just gonna fall asleep here. Wait, I mean, when you when you take into account the fact that. Uh, you you can't move a pot faster than you can just move two of them because you know the other one's moving. Makes well, it a lot more I mean, interesting. If, Makes if it a little Link, a little bit more interesting. Look, if Link didn't violently throw pots and shatter them all over the floor, maybe you could have picked them up and moved them. But you know what? Link Link sees a pot and he has to <laughs> throw it violently to the floor. Link didn't throw anything in that room though. Well, yeah, what he, he normally, normally does. What he normally does, and then when he gets a uh, when he gets the noble sword later, he literally just by slashing his sword just like cuts through them. Interesting tech here, by the way, by pressing select there and opening the the map. Actually, um, you can also do this with like any other menu, start, save and quit menu, etc. Uh, it actually allowed the screen to fade in faster. You'll notice as well that I will try and choose like. There, there are two different types of transitions, or like sub sub map transitions, basically. Uh, there's a fade in transition, and there's a uh, there's like a wipe transition. On fade in transitions, on like really slow fade ins, I'm actually trying to menu during those because it actually cuts the animation uh, time wise. So it saves me probably about I don't know half a second to menu during that. Just a little optimization, just something I thought I'd mention. But it's been something I've been doing all run and I never mentioned it, so. Yeah. Uh, get this in the water. room is also, okay. yeah, this room is also. Yeah. So uh, you saw Teach catch that key there. So normally, if the key falls into the water, you'd have to dive to grab it, and then you get the text being like, oh, you got a key. Um, but if you catch it before it falls into the water, you don't have to see that, so it's really nice. Quick pit stop here to grab some extra seeds. Yeah. Kind of run a bit low. Yep, we should have enough for the end of the dungeon now. Until we warp away after and get nice. more. I, just, I, I, I love the fact that Onox decides to put these convenient things in all these locations just for you. Yep. Like, it's like he wants to lose. Genius. Very genius. Maybe it wasn't actually Onox who put them there. Maybe it was uh, Onox's uh, secret architect. Uh, maybe it was this guy. <laughs> Discount Agonim got his robe from the dollar store. I mean, it's true. Tries to be so, yeah, Agonim, this... just can't, can't live up to it. This mini boss is pretty simple, especially with the power ring. Uh, light the torches, he becomes vulnerable. Uh, the real one is the one with the shadow underneath it. Yep, and then, oh, this room. Ah, yes, the famous room. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see come more back of it soon. Later. But it, oh. Did you get a good look at the keys in that room? Yeah. Well, hopefully that will be the only time we do that. Oh, hey, we got Oops. the the slingshot. I wonder yep. what we can do with that now. So the slingshot allows you to 
uh, use your seeds as projectiles. Um, so we can use them as weapons, basically. Weapons or just like generally, uh, if we want to throw a seed, essentially, uh, we can do that. Yep. Uh, just like I'm about to do here. There we go. To make that chest spawn, we're going to immediately save and quit. Yeah, and, and take all, the portal back. All you need to do is light the last torch, and then you can just immediately leave the chest will spawn immediately so you don't have to worry about it. Yep, so this this room I can get screwed in. Yep. All right, I almost did on that first one. There we go, we're good. Yeah, those keys yeah. can even be in worse positions where they're right in front of the switch, and then you just you can't do anything. You just bask Jump. in your time loss. Yeah, honestly, that's a good that's a good way to put it. In which season, though? Uh, uh probably, probably summer. Yeah, probably you're summer. Basking. True. You're not basking in sunlight, but you're basking in I don't know. Time lost time bed. I, I mean, sun bed, tanning bed. I can speak English, okay? The, the Legend of Zelda Link's tanning bed. <laughs> there it is. You can you can tell how long we've been hanging out with Tej when none of us can speak English properly. <laughs> uh, I'm a bad influence. Okay, so this room can be tricky. These uh, wizard orbs spawn completely randomly, and Whoa. oh, not gonna lie, lately. Uh, okay, there we go. Lately, that was actually really, really frustrating. Um, I've been swinging my sword too early there, so I tried to swing later, and that was the result. Uh, this jump is actually pretty tight, and I'm not making it. Yeah, so this is a three-tile no, gap. Uh, so normally you're only supposed to jump like two tiles, but if you jump right at the edge of a tile, you can jump three tiles. Yeah, so you'll notice I actually buffered there just to make sure I got across. Um, the intended strat is to use Ember Seeds in that room uh, to light the torches and make a bridge up here, but we A... Oh my god, please. Come up, please. My, I am actually a pixel too far left. There we go. Yeah. Now we're good. Perfect. Ugh. And then, yeah, Goma decided to bring a, a giant claw to this fight. Unfortunately, isn't very good for protection because, you know, there's just a blind spot right uh, by the eye that you can just shoot through. Yeah, you have what I'm pretty sure is a two pixel window to stand. And at first I was actually uh, on the X coordinate that is the left and right. Um, and I was actually one pixel too far to the left. Uh, at first, I had to adjust myself. Yep. It is what it is. Alright, so you may have noticed earlier in the midst of the pre Dungeon 3 minute that I was doing, uh, I grabbed something from a chest. Uh, I grabbed what I, I'm pretty sure it was the square jewel. Um, but uh, where did I grab? It was the square. The, yeah. the square PlayStation button. <laughs> we're going to go over here and grab the pyramid jewel uh, because the next area uh, that we go to requires having all four of the jewels. It is also the best area in the game. True. Very Don't true. Don't at me. D Don't at me. <laughs> at X Ice Blue. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna be uh, getting the rest of them as okay, mentioned, fine. and nice Buzz Blob. Yeah, those Buzz Blob control you. Buzz, buzz Blobs with an S. Yeah. There we go. Plural. And hey, it's the old man. Who gives us the circle jewel. Yep. So now we're off to get the, uh, the, the S, S, the X jewel. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's the someone... X jewel. Or I almost said, because I wanted to say the cross jewel because of, like, PlayStation. But... Yeah. Hey, I mean... Wait you, call... Wait, you call the X button on the PlayStation the cross? No, but I know that it's called that. By some people, what? by a lot of people, actually. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the X button on a PlayStation co uh, controller, a lot of people call it cross. I mean, it's technically not wrong. 
The strat here is just to shoot a bunch of mystery seeds at the, uh, the, jeez, um, oh, the goodness. torch there. Also, hardest yeah, boss in the game, focus dead. required. Oh. Oh, that, that was really, really, really close. Nice. <laughs> nice, good uh, job. So when you actually shoot mystery seeds, um, you, hang on a second, sorry. When you shoot mystery seeds, it can come out as one of like every type of seed that you have, besides for mystery seeds, because that's, I guess, obvious. But uh, we the strat there, just to save a menu, is to shoot mystery seeds until one comes out as an ember seed. Might right, wait, can we can we uh can we just take a minute to enjoy the soothing sound of the tarm ruins? Oh sure. It's just mm, perfection. Mm, so good. And I love the aesthetics too. It's like a little bit darker than normal. So it really gives off a really nice vibe. The color palettes really give this place a lot of character. Yeah. I totally agree. I really like um, the version of Fall. It's like a really nice I like, uh, red. I like all of them. Yeah. Honestly, I like all of them. And. Now that we have all the seasons, we can effectively use them to kind of traverse uh, the area in very uh, different and very unique means. Because before we'd only have a few, wow. and the puzzle is very simple. But now we have to actively switch between all of them to solve the puzzle. And speaking of solving the puzzle, uh, we're going to be getting the noble sword from this uh, forest maze, and. Uh, Luckily, we don't have to worry about a trading sequence to get the path. We just know the path, and then we can yeah, get it. Take that, Deku Scrub. Mm. We don't need your hints. Yep, the hint, in case you're wondering, uh, is you want the seasons. Okay, so uh, both of the ways to progress to both the Noble Sword and uh, to the Ancient Ruins, both the ways to progress are... Uh, transitioning when or transitioning from the coldest season to the warmest season so it's winter now we go left and we're gonna make it fall and we're gonna go down uh so right now to advance forward it's transitioning uh in a circle uh going counterclockwise uh to get the noble sword it's just transitioning left every time but now we're gonna make it spring transition right and then make it summer and just go up here we go very nice. Uh, we have time, I believe, for a couple of quick donations uh, before we enter Ancient Ruins. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have $100 from Ori Sky, who says, as promised, donating another $25 for each of your attempts at hide and seek skip. <laughs> also, also, here we go. Hey, Tej, what do you get when you cross a flying Zelda enemy with an Uno reverse card? Keys are on? Keys are on? <laughs> Sorry, Keys, you know I had to. <laughs> and we also have $10 from Abutu who says, hmm, Link's Awakening looks pretty different from what I remember. <laughs> Best of luck with the run, TGH. Thank you both very, very much. Mm -hmm. And then we got some plot here with uh, Twin Rova, or one of the pieces of Twin Rova, who's like, yeah. Do this. Continue. Because yeah, thanks yep. for helping us revive Ganon. Yeah, that's Perfect. their main. That's their main goal is just to revive Ganon, basically. Um, which is why General Onox is doing what he's doing. Uh, it's why Varan is doing what she's doing in Ages, uh, which both basically, I think, canonically take place at around the same time. Yeah. So basically, it links in two places at once. <laughs> No, or I think like one is supposed to be after the other. Yeah. Uh, but that order is actually up to you in the linked playthrough. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Ooh, soothing melodies here. Ooh. Ah, nice little, sounds really good. Nice little avant-garde track. We should put yeah, that this in is this is a. Uh... Yeah, this is uh, Ancient Ruins, uh, D6. Um, our goal here is to basically survive. climb this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, survive. survive. <laughs> uh, climb this tower. Uh, we're going to fight one of... Uh, I'm going to put this in, like, at least 30 quotations. 
uh, General Onox's, uh, one of his, uh, his generals, um, General Vire. <clears throat> is that, is that actually, is that I actually think canon? The, I think that the, the U.S. version, he says he's either like a, like a corporal or a general or something. Wow, he That's really what... got, got a promotion from Link's Awakening. Yeah, heavy promotion. Jeez. Or, well, um, I guess he was demoted in Link's Awakening since Link's Awakening takes place after this. Right, right, yeah. So a heavy demotion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going to pick up probably one of, the, I'd say, the second best boomerang in the the mm, third best boomerang, because you still have, you have the boomerang from Link's Awakening. You have the Gale boomerang from, uh, what? Twilight. Is it Twilight? Princess. Yeah. And then you have this boomerang. This boomerang you can control anything like you can about, you can spin it around in circles what about the mighty boomerang from bs legend of zelda where'd you rank that eh, eh, <laughs> it's okay you can't control that one though can you i mean you don't need to it just flies across the screen and just pierces everything it touches true very true yeah thank god uh, but we're also gonna we're things. also gonna see yeah, we're also going to see one of the uh, a Zelda One Runner's worst nightmare boss reimagined <laughs> in 4K. Oh no! But first, we got to um, talk about the best room in Zelda history that's coming up soon. Oh yeah! Uh, oh, I think I'd say I this. Is, I'd say this is the second best. Ages. Oh right! Yeah, I'd yeah. say this is yeah. the second, second best, best one. Best. Ages has the first best, or the the number one, top of the charts. True. Yeah, Aegis has the 50-50 that's not actually 50-50 and also always fails the first time because screw you, says the game. Um, this one is actually 50-50 and actually can work first try. Um, uh, Asher, but it you is wanna, still you tell, luck. Oh, yeah. Asher, you want to tell chat what this room is? Yeah, this is Welcome to Indiana Jones, where if you paid attention and you saw <laughs> that rupee, yeah, that's Birdly. Shout outs to the the Delta Rune Chapter Two. Yeah, shout outs, <laughs> shout outs to saving twenty minutes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, oh come a on! A classic Zelda one type room here, where you just push a block in the center of the room after killing some enemies. I want to grab a key here and the... trampoline back up before we fight Vire. Uh, so Vire is the mini boss of this dungeon. Uh, and he can be very mean. Yeah. That's uh, that's General Vire to you, sir. Corporal. Oh, excuse me, General Vire. Yeah. Uh, so generally, Vire will uh, <laughs> <laughs> will wander around the outskirts of the room and then either charge at you or stay down like that. And that was actually wow, wow, an extremely, what a fight! That was an what extremely fight. good fight. Yeah, that's actually um, Vire can be really mean. Uh, in ages, you can actually have a manipulation for it, but uh, here, no such thing, and that fight can be really, really annoying. Oh, oh right, so here's the 50 50 room. All right. Aww. 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 All right. That's one. Take two. Aww. Aww. That's, that's two. That's two. Oh, come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh boy. Here so we th are. this is just luck. It's 50 50. Oh, baby. There, oh, we, there go. we go. There we go. We Perfect. Got it. Four just seems to be your lucky number, Teej. You got, what, fourth try hide and seek skip, fourth try button? Yep. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, uh, for each time, by the way, uh, for the amount of times I try HSS skip, um, I will donate $15. So I'm going to donate at least 15, no matter what. Uh, and for each time I fail, I'll donate an extra 15. Sounds like By a plan. Way. Anyone so. in chat want to match yeah, that? Who wants that to seems match like that. a good idea yeah. to me. Let's match. Let's. Who wants to match that? I'll do it. It's a double frame perfect trick, uh, just like hide and seek skip. Oh, so, by the way, this is Manhandla. Oh, yeah, boy. Manhandla. Zelda one runners rejoice. This is Manhandala, uh, but reimagined. And so still it's, it's, bad. it's a giant, it's a giant buzz blob that decided to attach four piranhas to yeah. his face. 
That pill was really we shy in the bottom left one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay, now we're good. Now Honestly, we go. I kind of like this fight, even though it's a little tricky and kind of annoying. I honestly kind of like the concept. And also, <laughs> even though it's Manhandle really bad. Half. Even though it's really bad in every objectional, uh, objectional. I'm making up words Objective now. Objective. And it, it's, it's objectionally bad. There we go. Objectively. We go. God, English. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it is objectively bad in every single way possible. It's still a good fight. It's still better than oh, the yeah. original fight. Also, Link now has oh, the power of all wind. No, that's the power of General Mills. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I, it's not wind, it's oh, General Mills. Fair enough. You pointed this out. You pointed I, this I, is I your did, fault. I did, I did. That is true. All right, so now, um, actually, we can squeeze in a couple of quick donations uh, while I get to where we start this manipulation. Oops. Sounds, sounds good. We have $5 from Lilac Oligochi, who says, Hey, Teach, good luck on your run. Oracle of Ages and Seasons is my childhood game and my favorite one in the whole series. So I'm glad to finally see one of your runs. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much. And if you, like Lilac, are a fan of Legend of Zelda, remember, we have some incredible prizes running right now. Please go to the website and take a look at them. There's a really neat cross stitch. There's these incredible Lon Lon Milk candles. Really encourage you to get your donations in. $25 minimum gets you into everything in this block. So definitely take a look there. We also have $25 from Kate Latte, who says, Wish I could speedrun seasons IRL. Good luck on the run, TGH. It's a mood. I am with you there. <laughs> no, mood. Thank you, Kate. So, Thank you, Lila. Thanks very much. So this is one of this is actually the longest manip chain in the entire game. Um, our goal here is to manip where we get the rusty bell. Um, so where you pick up the, the pirate skull here. Um, the pit that the uh, the rusty bell in is purely RNG, uh, but we don't we don't we don't like looking for things. We just want to know where they are all the time. Yeah. And so we want to okay. get this manipulation sure perfect, and then we want to fall into the first available hold. But that's not all because then we want to carry this manipulation all the way into the next dungeon, which is a whole sequence in and of itself. No, okay. I didn't. I couldn't quite hear the uh, the men up there. You know what? Okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna do that again. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, Sorry, we'll spend. Probably... No, nah, it's okay. We'll spend the extra like minute. It's fine. Yeah, it's also hard to hear the slashes on the um, on the level two sword because it makes a little sound when you have sword beams. Yeah, it makes like a sound a sound that's twice as loud as the actual slashes themselves. Yeah, so it can be hard to hear. But yeah, so yeah, we're, we're trying to carry this all the way from grabbing this rusted bell. Uh, we pick up an extra an extra Pegasus seed drop, and then we carry it all the way into D7 to manipulate a specific room and go from there. Yep. Yeah, let's, uh, let's give him some concentration here so we can hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, here we go. I should be able to get it now. There we go. That's better. Perfect. Yeah, I need to listen to a uh, listen for a high and the medium, uh, the last medium that I slashed, I thought was high. Yeah. At first, so. All right, and then this should work. And there we go. There it is. That's better. I could have just done that on Manipt, but I'd rather show you all the Manipt. Yeah. Yeah, plus it'll make um, one room in Dungeon 7 way more. <laughs> Uh, decent to deal with because when we get to it, it it's very annoying and we have to do it twice. Just just know that the uh, Armos stink. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, the Armos, the Wizrobe, the Keese, and the the Magna Gloves room, uh, all those things are manipped uh, with this minip, which is really nice. Yeah, and then also that drop. Uh, with the boomerang there to get the Pegasus Seed is also a part of the manipulation because we're running a bit low on seeds, so we want to stock up again. Also coming up here, uh, we get to be extremely rude 
to this. Uh, we this... don't just get to be. We have to be. Yeah, yeah so we can't. We have if to... we ask nicely, uh, they won't do it. Because like, ah, eh, nah, we're too lazy. We don't want to do it. But if you demand that it gets done, they'll do it. So you just you just barge into this person's home and you're just like, hey, fix this bell. <laughs> you got to like, be okay. assertive. Pretty much. You got to assert Pretty yourself. Pretty much. No politeness allowed hey, in that. In that th this link is shop. just very rude. Oh, coming Literally, up here, oh, we have to we have to be oh. a little careful where we walk in that in that one room right there with that portal. Uh, if we go too low, we can actually trigger the uh, the hide and seek cutscene. Which will start the hide and seek game, which we don't want to yeah. do because that would remember us, when like, we skipped that earlier. Yeah, remember when we did hide and seek skip earlier? Yeah. Uh, if you aren't careful, if you go too low, if you go like maybe a tile and a half below the very top of the screen, uh, you will trigger that cutscene. Yeah, and you don't want to. You don't want to deal with that cutscene now. Yeah, and now also, this is uh, the, the second best cutscene best in the game. Get your cat jams out, please. You heard it in Oracle Ages. You get to hear it in seasons again. Yar. <laughs> Yar. And now it's a bit of a bit of a fun fact, by the way. On any screen that you see that shakes like this, like violently shakes, um, RNG is likely rolling twice per frame. Um, we factor that in with the minute for D7. Or the continuation. It's also the same with a couple of screens in Subrosia, uh, where there are volcanoes, like erupting. Uh, this the screen is shaking, so the RNG is rolling twice per frame. It's very important to move cleanly through those screens. Yeah. And these pirates are spinning around, uh, not losing their balance somehow. Well, not at least not enough to fall down. Yeah. They're very stable. They've done this for a very long time. Imagine being a skeleton and getting seasick. Yeah. Could, couldn't imagine Hey, you that. could say they're seasoned pirates. ba ha 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 That was funny. You know, wait, wait, ba, <laughs> wait, ba ha ha You kind of sounded like a little bit like, like Papyrus talking there. No, that was actually my best Covert Muffin impression. Shout out to Cobra Muffin. Shout out to Cobra Muffin. <laughs> all right. So continuing on, this jump is kind of tricky. Uh, another three tile jump, which we all know and love. There we go. Also made a lot easier by being uh, midway between tiles. And I'm, I'm going to ask for silence here as I mash my heart out here. Okay, should be good. Nice. All right, so a couple things to know here. Uh, those sword slashes were for a reason, I promise you. <laughs> um, so that was to fix the RNG seed for what I want, and it's going to make this first room uh, over here with the addition of three slashes very favorable. Yeah, and then this uh, room is very important because uh, you're going to see that those torches go out and if you're in the room when all the torches go out, you get warped to the beginning of the dungeon. And so our goal here is to skip uh, defeating the ghost. And so we're going to... Oh, that bomb didn't explode. What? Oh, so okay. The, That's a problem. The goal is to get to as close to the staircase as possible. So with that left room, which unfortunately didn't... The crack wall didn't blow up. And then we want to make a very tight sequence of inputs to get to the staircase so that we don't have to defeat the ghost. Yeah, that can be really tricky. Casually, you're okay. supposed to go through and collect a couple of keys and, you know, defeat the Poe sister or hit the Poe sister and tell her to stop cursing the room. Yeah. And there, there we, we go. go. Okay. So we're through. That's post skip. Yeah. And so yeah, you the see pause that room with... does. Oh, go ahead. Uh, the pause there uh, actually was purposeful uh, where it was exactly. Uh, the pause allows me to move, uh, whereas I otherwise wouldn't be able to because of lag frames. Yeah. Uh, you'll, you would notice that Link stops 
uh, whenever the lights like go out slightly. Oh, I'm actually not on the nip. Oh no. Oh, it's because it's, it's, you had to uh, soft reset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. forgot briefly. So that this I is why this room sucks. So any of those armos can be pushable, uh, but it's random. So there's a chance that it can be in the far left corner. Uh, and so uh, if we were still on the nip, uh, we just have it on the first one that we uh, interact with and it can be right by the switch. But unfortunately, it's just going to be in a random place. Yeah, we also try to keep the nips for this room in particular. So we didn't have to worry about the keys getting in the way. Yep. Yeah, so much for. Oh, God. Wow. Oh, whoa. Uh, I don't think I've ever fallen there before. OK, cool. That's we still made it before. <laughs> Put that on the list. T7 is full of surprises. I'm still not sure how that the wall didn't blow up there. Yeah, I think you That's maybe like, were I'm like still... a pixel too far right or it something. Must have, it must have been close. Yeah. You Somehow, even saw the bomb think... like go close to the wall. So like, it must Somehow, have been I don't think my menu small. was messed up. I think my menu is fine, actually. Yeah. Also, these are God. some of the worst enemies in the game. So you're supposed oh, yeah. to use the magnet gloves to like magnetize them so you can uh, get them closer to you. Uh, but that sucks. And also just killing them normally sucks. So overall, they're just kind of annoying. <laughs> okay, not the worst position. My health is not fantastic. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, luckily you still have <laughs> your potion, so. That is true. Yeah, that's that's actually really big. Yeah, that's, what, Super that's the reason why we want to keep it here is for occasions like this. Yeah. So this is where we get to fight our first first encounter with one of the Poe sisters. Yep. Oh, that was way too far up and right. There it is. All right, so coming up is the uh, the only instance while, where I will actually do the uh, the magnet jump, uh, the magnet. I don't know what exactly you'd call it, but basically a jump out of the magnetic attraction, uh, unbuffered. So let's see if I can get it. Nice, nice, very go. solid. And then we well, the red one will jump away from you, the blue one will not Oh, hey, hear. it's Sands and Papyrus. Oh. Oh my god, I thought... I thought... Uh, never mind. <laughs> you thought it this was over, This isn't Z2! Huh? What are you talking about? You had to fight Z a red and a blue Stalfos oh to get the cape. I, I don't know why I never made that I'm sorry, not the, not the cape. You mean it's the big nose, sorry. The big nose. We we were talking before the run about how uh, Zelda 2 has a room actually just straight up with a blue skeleton and a red skeleton. Um, like not even <laughs> like not even a hint. It's just straight up blatant. Um, but I didn't know that this game had that too. That That's great. It's quote perfect. unquote great. Yeah, right, so here we have nose. the mini boss. Here we have the mini boss with uh, with both Poe sisters, uh, uh, including the one we never actually saw. Uh, finally, a worthy uh, opponent with a sword. Oh wow, that was. Yeah, we want to make sure that we finish this fight before the torches are blown out because, uh, much like before, that can be very punishing. <laughs> and then I hope you like stairs. <laughs> I love stairs. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna be going the through a lot in this them. place. Hey, you know what's the best design choice? How do we artificially extend a dungeon? Let's just have a room full of stairs. Don't forget, you, you gotta put the blocks there. They make the room better. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> you gotta block it off and have stairs go back to the oh, same sure. thing. So it's just a stair maze. It's so great. If nothing else, that room is a good example, though, of uh, showcasing the fade-in animations versus the, the wipe that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. But, yeah. Of course, they make those slow. It's fine. Yep. <laughs> and then doing a fun little thing here where 
Uh, Teach holds all the way right there so that he can land straight onto these uh, platforms with the switches. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you see what I saw? It was another Sands and Papyrus room. Oh my uh, god. Those were green. Those were green skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, legit, I wasn't paying attention, so I, I, I actually trusted Ice on that one. <laughs> Yeah, that, there's your first mistake. <laughs> never, never trust me. That's that's the mistake. <laughs> yeah, someone in chat mentioned this, but um, Rock's Cape is incredible because it really is. You can basically just maintain your uh, speed with your uh, Pegasus seeds and double jump. It's so great. So here's a Gliok. There is yeah, uh, Gliok. Gliok. Gliok guards the seventh essence of nature. Oh no. Um, which I'm not gonna mention what exactly this object looks like because this is in fact a charity stream, but y'all can use your imagination. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the, the essence of life. It's, it's, it's the it's the seed of life. Essence. Yes. Yes. Moving onward. All right, so now we're coming up on the last dungeon of the game, but first we need to get there. And the way we get there is with a bunch of really, really cool looking jumps. Uh, you'll see. Yo, I, I like really cool looking jumps. Oh, shout outs. All right. No, big shout outs to literally hearing Maple's theme for 0.5 seconds <laughs> whenever you no, exit right. a dungeon. <laughs> It's just doo doo, and then you're you're done. Maple's gone. Da -da -da -da. I almost went to go see Onox prematurely. Yeah, Ooh, not nice shot. Oh, look at those Lionels. Hey, see, uh, so do you see cool. this amazing nature? <laughs> here's cool jump number one. Cool uh, jump. That's not the right menu. We're gonna yes. jump with no cape. Nice. Oh, we got the, the oh, we got my. two tektites spawning there. You got to be joking me. That is wow. There we go. That's way to ruin my fun. That's that is incredible. Awful. That's actually I've never seen that. That's never Ooh. happened before. What's <laughs> the count now? <laughs> no, but real talk, I've actually legitimately never seen both of them spawn on the other side like that. Yeah, so we just throw something in there. This subrosion yep. throws a bunch of random things in there. It's the uh, wealthiest it can be subrosion. <laughs> subrosion through. It can be literally the, the exact through. flippers we got. Yeah. Also, flippers and the Ricky's boxing gloves. I'm also, sure. uh, welcome to eco terrorism. Yeah. Uh, yep, this entire environment is absolutely destroyed. The ecosystem's gone. It's just full of lava. It's okay though because we need to do this. Yep, to it's, advance. It's needed, required. This game is strange. You ever think about how strange this, this game, game is? This game is incredibly strange. This like especially compared to Ages. Like Ages has you do some weird stuff, but like the stuff that the game makes you do in seasons is morally questionable. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can I can agree to that. All right, here we go. All right, so more cool looking jumps. That's actually the less cool one. Yeah. The really cool one is in this room. This yep. this is the one that just like. Who there needs we go. to nice. push boulders sure. when you can just jump? Yeah, there's a puzzle in that room. <laughs> yeah, just just <laughs> jump. Believe it or not. What do you mean? Yeah. Just. Okay, so speaking of cool jumps, though, there's also a really cool jump in Dungeon 8, uh, oh. the Sword and Shield uh, dungeon, known we as have Hyper a, Slingshot Skip. We have a pixel perfect, double frame perfect skip here coming up. And whoo, it's a doozy. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, let's see if we can nail it. Yeah. And so basically what it is, um, is it skips uh, needing to get the hyper slingshot and also just uh, skips a whole portion of the dungeon. So it's a really nice time save, but as mentioned, it is double frame perfect. So yeah, once saved, he gets there, saves, we're going to give him some focus. It's saves. also sub pixel dependent yeah. as well, but there's there's a setup for that, uh, luckily. Yeah, so the reason, this is, the reason this is double frame perfect 
Wow, that must have missed by like a pixel. Uh, the reason this is double frame perfect is because uh, you actually go slightly farther if you delay your cape usage. Uh, so you can jump and then use the cape afterwards, right? Uh, the cape usage for this particular jump is actually frame perfect. Uh, and it gets you just far enough across. Uh, yeah. So I am, whoops, fine. I am going to set up by falling in this hole on purpose. Trust me, that was on purpose. Yeah, reset the sub pixels. Yep, stand on that pixel exactly. And here we go. There we go. Very nice, nice first try. First try. Very Let's go. nice first try. That's really good. That trick is double you, frame uh, perfect. You unfortunately saved a bunch of viewers money, but <laughs> you know, unfortunately, yeah. you saved Ori. I mean, you can you can donate as much as you want for the first try. Yeah, I will. I will up. I will up mine. I'll. You know what? I, I feel I feel bad now. <laughs> um, I will give I will give fifty dollars. I'll donate fifty. I will too. It's I honestly did not expect to get that first try at AGDQ. I'm actually like really happy about that. Yeah, that's incredible. And I can play super aggressively too throughout the rest of this dungeon eight uh, because I still have my potion and I have a bunch of seeds and a bunch of bombs. Yeah, so, that's one of the big benefits to getting it first try is that um, you'll have a bunch of resources. If you get it, say, third try, you're going to be lower on health, you're going to be down a bunch of seeds, and you're going to be low on bombs. So this is yep. just really nice. You might have noticed that I entered the dungeon and promptly saved. There's a reason for that. Um, because, yeah, if you, miss that, if you miss that trick multiple times... Uh, you're left with like zero resources, like Asher said. So yeah. you need to like, and I don't want to. I'm not going through this dungeon with no seeds and like no health either. So yeah, and might as, as well you, just save and start again. And as you said, having potion is really helpful here. So the rest of this dungeon is just um, taking these ice crystals from that room and dropping them down these holes. You don't need to drop them down every hole. You just need three of them. Yeah. Uh, and we're two out of three so far. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Do we need four? I don't know. We need we need some amount. <laughs> we need enough. I think, I think, it's, just I think it's there's four total, and then you drop three. Yeah, and then I think that's correct. And uh with more morally questionable stuff, we're now uh freezing I'm up a here. volcano that's already having to deal with ice issues. Hey, whoa, whoa. I, I, I mean, an issue here. Uh, 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 glacier. We are we issues. are saving Holodrum or something or something. By the way, yeah. Sans and Papyrus were just in that room with the minecart. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. There it is. There they are. Um, um, I can't believe oh. it. <laughs> oh, you oh. just ran over Papyrus. Oh, oh. I cannot Damn, I believe this. I cannot believe you've. I cannot believe you've made me aware of this. This is terrible. I can't believe you ran over papyrus. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, 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 that's what? not good. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, 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 look, as long as look, you need to. Okay, you need to get out of here. Get out of here. This I'm surprised intended. that worked. Okay, we're good. Okay. Wow. Uh, that so was, yeah, that uh, can happen. That, that was actually uh, incredible. That can happen. You can actually just... There's a little piece of collision that you can land that on. Um, that, that's put in simpler terms. That That's like the simplest way I can possibly put that. There are... Uh, there's a piece of collision that that can land on right there that that can happen on. Yeah. I found it. And now time for the <laughs> boss. So, uh, who is ready for the most Zelda boss of all time? Well, we already yep. fought the saber tooth. You, you guessed it. It's you Medusa. It. The famous Zelda Medusa head. Yeah, you know? And it's in every one of your favorite Zelda games. Look at that. A little bit, little bit off topic, but I, I, I caught, a, I caught a, a bit in chat, 
and I laughed. Um, I think someone said it's how Papyrus would have wanted to go out derailing things. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even know where to start. Oh, I love it. Thank you for that one. Oh, God, that's 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 one of the that's one of those messages where like you know I, I I actually have chat like closed during the run so I can so I can focus but that's one of those lines that make me glad I had chat closed. <laughs> if I had seen that, oh my God! Would you like some donations instead? <laughs> Absolutely, sure. Go ahead. Awesome. We have fifty dollars from Surreptitious Sneak who says Oracle of Seasons was the first Zelda game I played all the way through by myself when I was a kid. Now I get to play it with my kids. I can't wait to see the look on their faces as TGH crushes it. Go TGH! And don't forget everyone, Amazon Prime comes with a free Twitch sub. Oh, that's good information to know, Chad. I don't know if you know that, but keep that in mind. Any uh, any primers in chat? Any <laughs> primers in chat? Let's go! Come on! Let's get a let's get this level five hype train going. I see a level four in progress. <laughs> was that in the donation? The whoops, uh, the uh, the prime. Oh yeah, that was like, part of the donation. Primer? Wow, that's amazing, actually. Surreptitious sneak has skills here. We also have. <laughs> yeah, that's like. Super cool. Nice. <laughs> we also have five dollars from Oleno Name, who says, "Hey Teach, I hope your Oracle of Seasons run goes great. Shout out to you and your awesome community for encouraging me to get into speedrunning. Hope you're ready for my Stardew Valley run later this week." Smiley. Thank you very much, and good luck on your Stardew Valley run as well. Do you have time for a few more? Or are you wrapping things up? Um, no, we do have time actually. This cutscene is very long. <laughs> Sounds I'm, perfect. I'm looking at all these primes, these prime subs just firing <laughs> off in chat, and I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. We also have seventy-one dollars and seventy-five cents from CJ47, who says seasons along with ages were the first games I bought with my own money over twenty years ago. Seasons still ranks among my top five favorite Zelda games to this day, as well as holding the top spot for favorite handheld Zelda. Shout out to my coworker Miriam, who is a four-time cancer survivor, with two of those occasions being breast cancer. She will not confirm if she is immortal, but I'm of the belief that she is. <laughs> well, CJ, if you ever find out, you'll have to let us know. Thank you again, everyone, for your donations. This is for an amazing cause. You are really helping us make a difference. All right, so this is Onox's castle here. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of different rooms with enemies and then a boss fight. Uh, before we enter Onox, uh, there is a manipulation for this, but it's not super duper important. Oh, we uh, we also have the return of the return, the return of Nickelodeon. Oh no! <laughs> Hi there, face here. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Go. Okay. okay. So now coming up is you know Onox. We want to be attacking him with spin attacks, and then uh, the second phase will happen where uh, he'll bring in Din to protect him, but that actually is a detriment to him because we can get uh, double spins onto him, and then we can finish him off really quickly. Yeah, it's actually really funny. Um, just don't ask me about my casual playthrough on this boss. Oh, no, no. Um, we, we're we're going to ask about It took me quite a while. We're gonna it took ask me about quite that. a while to figure out what you're supposed to do on this phase, actually. Uh, yeah, you're actually supposed to use the Rod of Seasons uh, to knock Din away, but... Teach went through his speed entire run, inventory twice. Twice. Oh, my God. Yeah, and now time... Right, so this is the final fight right here, final phase. Uh, time uh, will time be coming will up be on yeah, the, the ninth hit, right? The ninth hit, yes. Yeah. Yep. Time to All fight right, Sigma. So... One, two, three, three. And time. Time. GG. And that is that very, is the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons All Essences. Very nice run. In, uh, very I got, nice I got run. one. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks for commentating, folks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I got one forty-two oh five as the final time. Very nice. Um, but yeah, I guess um, I guess some closing words. Um, 
Uh, would y'all like to actually uh, let the folks know where to find you, uh, both Ice and Astra? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Astra's Evolution. Uh, I have been primarily speed running Deltarune at the moment, so that's been fun. And you can find me at Twitch, Twitter, uh, X Ice Blue. Uh, the X is silent. Um, I, <laughs> I do a lot of retro Zelda. Um, I used to do Z1, no longer. Um, Z2, Link to the Past. And I also dabble in the Pixel Remasters, the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Um, yeah, I play a lot of randomizers. I play a lot of RPGs. I play a lot of casual stuff. It's everything's there. Awesome. You can find me at uh, twitch.tv uh, TVH. Twitch.tv slash TGH underscore SR. There we go. I can say my own channel name correctly. Um, but yeah, uh, just want to give a quick shout out to like pretty much the entire uh, Oracle of Seasons and, and also Oracle of Ages community. Uh, finding these skips, especially like namely the like Hyper Slingshot skip and Hide and Seek skip. Um, were both actually pretty recent developments, and they were truly, truly, like, uh, just huge group community efforts. Um, like, no one person contributed um, to to anything, really. Uh, it was, like, just, we're, we're talking multiple, multiple people. Uh, just, yeah. So this, this game has seen some huge improvements over the last couple of years, especially. Um, so I'm glad that I was able to showcase those and thanks for that opportunity i really appreciate it um but yeah shout outs to y'all for driving this game to where it is now and uh shout outs to gdq for raising money for an awesome cause uh prevent cancer foundation uh and for allowing us to be a part of the marathon as well and um i think that is it uh, thank you char as well for for hosting um i really appreciate it and thanks for uh being lovely Oh, thank yeah. you. And thank you, the viewers, as well, for uh, hanging out for my run and bearing with us for an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, make sure, so, make sure y'all go y'all follow Tej. Yeah, please. Tej is a wonderful, wonderful person. Indeed. Yeah, hope y'all enjoyed the run, and um, I'll see you around. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Peace. Yep. Peace. See ya. Wow, can we get one more virtual round of applause for that incredible Oracle of Seasons run? Again, there were two double frame perfect tricks in it, which seems like a perfect thing for 2022. We're going to head to a quick break, but don't worry, we're going to be back with some more amazing runs like Dead Space 2. So stick around and we'll see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of the marathon, please. Yeah, I guess I will. I will. <laughs> See you.
I'd like to take a moment to thank one of our incredible sponsors, Power Up Audio. Power Up Audio is an indie sound studio from Vancouver, Canada, and they've worked on such games as Celeste and Phantom Brigade. I'm sure you've heard of a few of those. In the past, they had handled audio on site, but for AGDQ 2022 online, they designed some of the sounds for the new GDQ overlay system. I know you've all been enjoying the new overlay, so make sure you thank Power Up Audio for some of their work on that one. You can check them out at powerupaudio.com and the upcoming Tunic ooh, at tunicgame.com. That's tunicgame.com. Thank you so Sorry, I'm just reading all of these donations. They are all so incredibly sweet. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, oh, there's just too many. We have $50 from Tiggs who says, I've been watching and donating for years, but found myself on the other side of things last summer when my doctor noticed a lump on my neck from across the room. The scare was real, but fortunately very treatable. So now happy and healthy and minus one thyroid, I'm so thankful I'm able to continue contributing to a great cause. $50 for a first try on a double frame perfect move? Don't mind if I do. And with that chat, if you've missed any of our action from today, don't worry, we've got you covered with the daily recap. Let's join the team for today's highlights. All right. And now it's time for AGDQ 2022 on the line. No, 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 we're what? done. Wait, no, 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 what? We're done. Are we? Ah. <laughs> no, no, no more. <laughs> She's got the hat. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> it's time for the daily we recap. We did that so many times. No. <laughs> it's time for the daily recap. Don't worry. We're, we've broken out of the loop. We're not going to do the pre-show anymore. Uh, the Tuesday Night Horror Block has not happened yet. Can stay hyped for that later. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, welcome. We just wanted to to help all of you at home. We know that this marathon is constantly going, so it's impossible to catch everything. We wanted to give you a few ideas of some of the runs that you should go back and check out on your own time, either on YouTube or on Twitch or whatever, or like weeks from now, whatever you want. <laughs> check these out because they are super cool. Uh, so let's just get right into it with some of these awesome clips. Uh, let's start with Deathloop because, I mean, it's the theme, right? Let's mm -hmm. let's go right into this one. Yep. And now it's time. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. I promise. That's the last no, one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's the last. The last. The amount of memes I have seen come out of that today. Absolutely staggering. Thank you, Internet. You're doing great. Yeah. Beautiful. Anyways, let's actually take a look at a clip from Deathloop because they had this really cool clip at the end of the run. So this saves about 20 minutes or something like that that we heard when they clip through this door, which is absurd, and then slap the button with the machete, which is just so beautiful. <laughs> I absolutely yeah. love it. This is the best part. And, uh, on top of all that, while trying to get that clip that saves so much time as they get into the vehicle here at the end, they're also simultaneously taking out one of the visionaries just off screen somewhere because they sabotage some fireworks. Super cool. By the way, I'm going to do this out of order. I forgot to introduce all of us. My name's Jay Hobbs. We got Spike Vegeta. We got Keys We got Fiesel. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, you know at this point. Hey, everybody. <laughs> but I um, apologize. To, to, to get us back on track here, I want to talk about uh, Metroid Prime here. Um, yeah. Shasta was so good that Shasta impressed himself. Uh, so we have to go out of bounds here to grab some items. And, you know, we'll have to eventually get back in bounds. Now, to figure out how to do that, Shasta is going to be shooting the floor to see where he can stand. And then he'll end up getting into a very specific position to get back in bounds. And, folks, this is such a hard trick that Shasta 
blew himself away that he actually <laughs> nailed it. Like, yeah, he's just this continuing is right to shoot at the, the floor be- here just to find it. Yeah, right at the beginning of the run, he was super worried about just getting stuck here for forever in the marathon run. Now you can see a lot of having to look around out of bounds to find himself. Very cool. I love when when runners find creative ways to like navigate through these just complete void areas and stuff. Absolutely lovely. But Spike, you and I both got to do some commentary today. And I mean, come on, we, we can't get away without talking about DKC too. hit us up with it. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country 2 was one of my favorite marathon races that I have ever seen. Four of the absolute best runners in the world, an SPD Wolf, Eason, Void, and Tonkatsu throwing down in the race. And what's great about it is, look at the screen right now. It's like, it's a Where's Waldo book. You look at anywhere, there's many (laughs) crazy stuff going on. There's Easter eggs everywhere. But I'm going to direct you to the top right corner where there is a juggling act going on from SBD Wolf, one of only two runners in the world to finish a run with this wrong warp. It saves like three seconds if you nail it. Bunch of unironically pixel-perfect jumps that you have to do to carry this beetle all the way across the level, juggle it, throw it back up in the air. Look at this one right here. Right on the edge. Oh, he should be dead. Bounces off of its corpse as he bounces back up, switches Kongs, breaks it on the end there, on like the, the scenery right there. And then wrong words out a little. You can see it popping off right there. Very exciting stuff for SBD Wolf. And basically tied him with ease and eventually moving into finishing in third place right there. And we got another clip we can talk about right here where this is at the end of the run. Void in bottom right, you can see, is getting into the squawks barrel about a full second before tongue katsu on the bottom left but takes damage right there trying to get the race skip both of them able to get the race skip and right now void has a very small lead but he needs to go get a backup kong so you're going to see them there's going to be a ring of red bees when they hit that point that is basically the sink backup point for this run void came in with about a one second lead and now they're both working their way zipping through the bramble and then as you can see right there tonkatsu by about a half second lead now is able to take the lead into the final boss fight with Captain K rule and take the W here at AGDQ 2022. This was a bonkers race from start to finish. Very, very fun to commentate. Yeah, that one was incredible. I only, I I only get to catch bits and pieces of runs sometimes when, when we're kind of putting out fires and stuff throughout the day. And (laughs) that one was incredible to see. I, I, I absolutely love that one. But speaking of seeing, we had a runner who didn't do any of that. (laughs) Keys, Metal Gear Solid 2. That is absolutely correct. So we have Apache Smash here. And, you know, when you can't see, the only thing you can really go off of is audio cue. So by punching 15 times, Apache knows where they are. And (laughs) yeah, you know, these are, as the commentator said, these are professional military employees. And they, they are completely unaware that the snake is there until they get, you know, a, a gentle tap on their rear end there. All, every single one of them just go, hey, 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 yeah, oh, hey, oh, you know? Oh, 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 my God, is that oh. snake? And he just <laughs> proceeds as if nothing oh, wow. happens. That's incredible. Oh, my God. <laughs> I absolutely I love, love when we have those beautiful humor moments in all of these runs of GDQ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, incredible. And we saw some classic, you know, retro gaming already, but let's bring it back again because we had one of the legends of speedrunning, Cool Kid, running Mega Man 2. Fiesel, right. I know you absolutely love this yeah, run. Tell this me was, about what you got great. here. Yeah, this run was was amazing. I mean, who, where, where to start? But there's just zips and clips all over the place. But the interesting thing that you might not have seen before, so we're going into Bubble Man here, and what we're trying to do is... Fire the last shot off and then uh, die right while that thing is in the wow. air. So he has died on those spikes at the same time the boss has died. And this gets him closer to the top of the screen. So at the end, when he transitions out, it'll just be a little bit quicker. It is barely a time saver. And if he had done it too early, he would have been game over. Like that was his last life. He risked wow, the entire no. run just to save like that couple of frames to get off the top of the screen faster. It's like barely a time saver. It's <laughs> so such a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Guess. Wow. But now this, I think you can you can appreciate without you know knowing too much about it. You're just going to damage boost, and you're going to use these iframes oh, to step oh, on those man. spikes, and it's going to happen over and over and over again, like in all these rooms. This is the strategy. How like, it, it looked like the last like, bit of the iframes. Right. You can't, you're right, because with the flashing, like, it looks like he's done, like, but he's, he's still alive. 
Yeah, and it's just amazing how you can get through all that. And of course, we will end the whole thing by clipping into the ceiling and zipping into the boss room in true Mega Man 2 style. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. You know, there, there he goes. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Not a Mega Man 2 run without some zips right. in it as well. Uh, <laughs> that, that was incredible. And it, hey, multiple times there, it looked like he was at death's door. And speaking of death's door, <laughs> Keith, tell me about I thought it. we were speaking done with the pre-show bits. Now. No, yeah. so, so we have Scrub Lord here with death's door. And I'm going to affectionately call it, if it's not named already, I'm going to call this the homie hook. So <laughs> Scrub Lord has to use the hook shot on these enemies to make it across these platforms to, you know, just skip whatever needs to be skipped. And at this certain point, he cannot reach the enemy yet. But don't worry, because another enemy is going to be a friend and push that enemy <laughs> close enough so he can hook across. And it's it's beautiful. Like it just teamwork really makes a dream work. It's just it's really hard to tell who's on your team sometimes. <laughs> yeah, apparently, <laughs> that is absurd. I love that. Just the, wow. could not quite land that hook. All right. Well, let's move on to our next one. I, I mean, I had to pull out some Spider Man, y'all. No, I was there on the couch for, for it. Sure. I think there's a really super cool uh, spot here that we didn't get to talk about much in the run. So we got six enemies to take care of in this fight. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to shoot on the rooftop over here. Boom. And then takes out the sixth, a big brute with two focus bars using a finisher. In the meantime, he's also menuing a new suit power because mm -hmm. he's going to do a glitch where he punches the ground and slows down time at the same time. Watch this right here. Boom, punch, time slowdown. That's a mini boss that he just took out it, like it was nothing. Wow. That fight is like 30 seconds, I think, less than 30 seconds for six enemies, one of which is like super jacked and a <laughs> mini boss. And that's all in 30 seconds. Too, right? Like that run Absolutely. was based on the On ultimate, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incredible stuff. But we got to get one more clip in for you because right. we just had a fantastic run happen a second ago. Right. In case you did not see this, just before this, this segment here, we had a TGH running Oracle of Seasons. Uh, and it was a fantastic run. Amazing commentary through the whole thing. Great gameplay. Um, but essentially what we're seeing here is called Hide and Seek Skip. So to do this, TGH is going to place a bomb. Then he's going to jump in the air and he's going to, if he times it right, get boosted across this pit and clip just enough into that rock. There we go to pull it out of the ground and then fall into the hole and then respawn on. And now you can basically go in the exit. You're supposed to exit the area through that, but we can enter this way and you can get to spring early and save a whole bunch. Of that's time. cheating. So, wow. Yeah, that's God. cheating. <laughs> it's the it only time not. he does it, believe me. It's not, yeah. yeah. It's only, everything it's, else is... Everything it, else is completely yeah. legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it no, is not a Zelda game. One. If you don't have a bomb, that lets you jump over right. something, dude. <laughs> Every Zelda speedrun, it's Everyone. Great. All right, well, there were lots of great runs today, folks. And don't forget, just because they're not mentioned on here does not mean that they were a very big blast to watch so please check them all out but as we get out of here i want to give people some runs that are kind of just our picks to look forward to next time so uh let's let's see spike hit me up with one sure i'm gonna go with tomorrow night i'm gonna go from four-way race to four-way race super mario galaxy anyone who's like oh super mario galaxy it's one of the slow 3d marios no it's super hype and you got four <laughs> of the new revolutionary runners of the new age of speed running in super mario galaxy thrown down they're gonna get through that game in under two and a half hours tomorrow it's gonna be hype check it out tomorrow night Feasel, go all right so tomorrow morning, just about six, seven hours from now, we've got Act Razor, and it's going to be professional mode race uh, between Aquas and Telio. Um, awesome category, a very difficult run, but you're going to see lots of new clips and out-of-bounds. Great stuff. Excellent. I, for me, I'm going to go ahead and pick, I'm going to hit you with a quick two for two brand new games from 2021, Kana Bridge of Spirits and Psychonauts 2. Insert Logic is running the first one. It's Bites is running the second one. Some just beautiful to see what speedrunners can do in such a short amount of time with a new game. You know, Hobbs, I'm shocked that you didn't mention Ori in the Blind Forest by oh, Rin because geez, it's I, you. It's Ori. That's how I forgot. That's basically, that's basically how I met half of my friends through you. It's but, Ori. Uh, yeah, it's Ori. How could you forget Ori? But yeah, everyone check out Ori. But also, do not forget that we have Dead Space 2 by Shark Hat yeah, after this. Dude. Uh, that interview that I had with Shark Hat was great. And even before the interview, we were talking so much about Dead Space. As, as a whole, uh, very passionate runner, very skilled runner, has first place in basically every Dead Space 2 category. You wow. do not want to miss this run. 
All right, folks, that's our daily recap for Sunday. We'll see you tomorrow for a daily recap once again. But in the meantime, please keep donating, keep watching, and hey, just keep throwing the hype down in chat. We will see you all next time. Get excited for Dead Space 2. Bye, everybody. You know what I like about Tuesdays? Wow, so much has happened today already, but we're not done yet. As everyone mentioned, Dead Space 2 is up next. But before we get to that run, I want to let you know that TGH made good on his promise. We have a $50 donation from TGH saying, as promised, here's $50 for the rather unexpected first try hyper slingshot skip. Best of luck in the rest of the marathon. Love to all of you. And TGH wasn't the only one. A lot of you took him up on his challenge. We have $50 from Reverend Gumby who says, here's my match for TGH making that insane trick first try. Let's go. We have $50 from Bryson Robot saying, first try $50. Let's go. We have $50 from Players A and B who say, here's $50 for TGH nailing that skip first try. Great stuff. And we have $50 from Cardboard Decoy saying, ship donation matched. And we have someone who may have added an extra zero. Anonymous donates $500 and says, first try every time. Thank you so much, everyone, for matching that donation. I'm sure I didn't even get to all of them, but really appreciate your generosity. That is a ton of money raised for an excellent cause. We have plenty more donations coming in as well. We have $500 from Like a Funner Name who says, thank you all for all of the time and energy that you put into this event. I lost my grandfather to cancer while I was in high school and this donation is made in his memory and for the hope that we can make a world without cancer. Best of luck to everyone in their runs. Thank you so much. And that is our goal here, is to make a better world, one without cancer, one where we can catch everything before it becomes a problem. And it's your donations that are making that happen, chat. It's all of your donations. We have already raised over $141,000 for charity on the very first day of this marathon. We have a long way to go before we hit some of our previous event totals, but we're making progress and you're making it happen. So thank you so much to everyone who is donating. And you know what, hey, it's been a while since we mentioned the charity. We are raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. The Prevent Cancer Foundation, founded in 1985, is a US-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. Their vision is to stop cancer before it starts. You can find out more information about PCF at preventcancer.org. That's preventcancer.org. It's hard to keep up with all donations coming in, chat. Please keep it going. By the way, I mentioned the uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania incentive at the start of my shift. And in that time, we have raised, I think, over $10,000 toward just that incentive.